subject of this video is going to be creating expressions in CFX. So what I mean by expression is a tool that we can use to, for example, manipulate a boundary condition. So in this case, what we're going to do is create a wind flow onto a cube, and then we're going to vary the profile of the wind from being a uniform fixed value to having something what we call a power law. The first thing I'm going to do is create a cube in a wind tunnel type situation. So if you right click on geometry and open design modeler, I'm just going to create a very simple computational domain. I'm going to have x and y in the horizontal direction and z in the vertical. So just clicking on z in the vertical direction and the xy plane, I'm going to create a sketch and it's just going to be a wind tunnel type geometry, so an elongated rectangle basically and longer in the x direction than it is in the y direction. Okay, this is about a 20 meter long tunnel. So the next thing I'm going to do is extrude this and I'm going to make it about 10 meters high. Just to check we're adding material and it's going in the normal direction. So hold your middle mouse button down and rotate. Okay, so that seems overly tall to me in comparison to width. So I'm going to bring that down to about five. Fantastic. Okay, that's a reasonable height of tunnel. And just click generate when you're happy. So the next thing I want to do is an extrusion, but taking material around the base. So the first thing I'm going to do is select the lower face. So clicking select faces at the top. Click the base here creating a new plane. So I want to create another thing to sketch from. Clicking on new plane from face and just going to leave that alone for the moment. So clicking generate. And what I want to do is create this cube on this lower face and then extrude it in. So I'm perhaps going to create it about somewhere near the middle, halfway along or a third of the way along. So making sure I've selected my new plane, clicking on new sketch, zoom in using the scroll wheel, sketch 2 is selected, so the next thing to do is go to sketching toolbox, create a rectangle, in this case approximate it as a square, fantastic, again the exact details don't really matter, exact sizing doesn't matter. We now go to the modeling tab and select extrude and details view. So how far do we want to extrude this? Let's have a look at two meters. So what you'll notice here is that the extrusion is actually going away from the domain because it's going downwards because of the axis or the plane, sorry, the plane normal is down. So what you would do here to reverse this process is click direction normal, change that to reverse, and what you see here is that that will now sit in that computational domain. We also want to, rather than add material, subtract material, in this case cut material. So once you've got something that looks like that, just click generate. And if we go to the bottom, what you should be able to see is a cut out there. So we're going to have these five surfaces, the sides and roof of the cube, they're going to be our cube, everything else is going to be computational domain. So the next thing to do is save that and open up the meshing software. Okay, so just double clicking on mesh to open up the meshing software and the purpose of this really is to look at expressions, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. The thing I'm going to do is just refine the mesh on the surface of the cube. So just wait for this to load, it'll take a few seconds. So now you can see our domain. Flow is going to be coming in, the airflow will be coming from the left, leaving from the right and going over the cube. So just clicking on the Z axis, right click, insert sizing. 
So we're now going to select the geometry that I want to specify the size on. Surfaces or faces is already selected. So I'm going to change selection mode here to be box select and just drag over the region where the cube is. And there you go, it all becomes highlighted. I'm now going to, that's my geometry selected. I'm now going to change the element size. Rather than being a meter, I'm maybe going to put it as five centimeters across a fairly large cube. Click generate when you're ready. So it's very much trial and error to get the right mesh size, the right cell size. So if that's not the right size for you, have another go. Next thing to do is to visualize the mesh, so see how it looks. That's normally a good thing to do um, when you're creating a mesh. So click this selection plane here, hold the left mouse button down at one side, drag it through where the shape is and release it at the other. And now click on the axis. To rotate the domain in the direction you want. Now click mesh and what you'll see is localized mesh here much much finer than it would be further away which is absolutely fine that's what we're looking for in this instance. What I would say in here is that our cube is much too big for the height of this domain. What we'd really want is the domain to be multiple times the height of this cube to not affect the blockage ratio but this is purely demonstration purposes that will do for the moment that mesh so click close and right click and update when that's done double clicking on setup to open up cfx so we want to consider a steady state case here so we can leave analysis type alone just double clicking on default domain we're only considering airflow in this instance and we'd anticipate this to be a turbulent case because we've got a bluff body. Now the options, none of those seem to suit. What we'd really like is RNG K Epsilon and just OK that. The next thing to do is create the inlet outlet, sidewalls, ground plane and actual cube geometry. So click boundary. I'm going to go through this quite fast because it's demonstrating in the videos. So inlet, select that geometry, make sure this option here is ticked. Rotate holding your middle mouse button down and select. Boundary details. What I'm going to do is leave this as three meters per second at the moment. And again, boundary. I'm going to call this sides and this is going to be a free slip wall and it's going to be this side rotate using the middle mouse button hold control down and select the side and roof so rather than being a no slip wall where the velocity of the wall is zero I'm going to set this to a free slip wall and just click OK next boundary is going to be the outlet. I'm probably going to call this an opening because we've got such a bluff body that will cause recirculation of the flow. So click opening. Select the location being the outflow region there. I'm going to set it as an average static pressure of zero. There should be two sets of walls which need naming so Boundary, and I've got this ground. That's a wall. Choose the selection region. It would be there. No slip wall. And finally, the remaining surfaces should all be in the cube there. So rather than doing anything else, we can just rename it. So I'm going to call it cube. Okay, in terms of solver control, double click on solver control, so the max iterations are a thousand and ideally we want it to converge to 10 to the minus 4. So our intention in this video here is rather than creating a 
constant velocity coming in from this end. What we do is create something called the power law velocity. So it would be a velocity that changes with height. And we could do that quite easily in CFX. And we're going to use this term we call an expression. First of all, I'll just explain briefly what the power law velocity is. The power law basically says that we have a velocity as a function of height. So much like the Earth's atmospheric boundary layer, or any conventional boundary layer on a wall, as you increase with height, the velocity will increase. And this is said to be proportional to some fixed reference velocity and the ratio of um, the height of the ground and the height at which the reference velocity is taken. And to help tune this, we have it to some power of alpha. You may have heard of the 1 7 power law, where alpha is equal to that 1 on 7. Or if you have a rough wall boundary layer, this might be something like 1 on 5. So it's very subjective what your alpha is, and you'd have to use an experiment to fit that curve to. So let's go back into CFX and try and model this. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is create an expression. So if you come to the top here, this square root with an alpha underneath is expression. So there's a few things we need to create. I'm going to begin with the constants. So I'm going to start with Z ref, and I'm going to start with U ref. So I'm going to say lowercase z, capital REF, and that's equal to, let's say the reference velocity is taken at 1, and we need to put the units in here for meters, but we also need to put them in square brackets, and when they're recognized, what will happen is you'll get this um, italics here. So just click and apply that. And now what you see is there's an expression called ZREF and it's got a fixed value of 1 meter. The next thing you do is right click here, insert expression, and I'm going to say UREF. And I'm going to call that, let's say, 3 meters per second. We also need a value of alpha. So in this instance, I'm just going to write that as an alpha. And because it's a unitless parameter, 0 0.163, I can leave it without units. So now we've got alpha, e ref, and z ref. So now we can create an expression and call it power law. So we, if you remember your power law equation, it's going to be uref. And you see because this is a recognized user created variable, it comes in there with a new font. And power law is the reference velocity times the z coordinate value, which is recognized here because it's gone in italics on zref, which is our it's our variable, or our constant in this case. And we want to have that to the power alpha, which again, when I type it in, it will change font. So if we click apply, what you see is that accept that there. So once you're happy that you've created your expression correctly, let's go to inlet and clicking boundary details and rather than having this three here like we did before what we're going to do is enter expression so we know that our expression is called power law so we can apply that so now when I run this case what you're going to see is a boundary layer profile building up which we can adjust the value of alpha for to change its profile so I'm going to finish this here and just show you in post-processing that that's worked. Save your project, close and run the simulation. Okay, so now that case has finished simulating. So what I'm going to do is visualize this inlet velocity in several ways. First way is to create vectors. 
And what I'm going to do is create a three dimensional vector. So if you click here, OK, that. And what we want to do is create the vectors at the inlet. You go so just viewing this from the side obviously we haven't got the best resolution because we're dealing with quite a coarse mesh on the inlet but what you see is that the velocity increases with height and you can see this here another way to visualize this of course is to um, show it in a quantitative form so if we create a line going to location and line and what we do is create a vertical line at the center of the inlet just inside the domain. So in the x direction it's going to be let's say minus two in this instance. It might be different for you. Minus two and minus two meters. I want it to be approximately in the middle. The ground is going to be at zero and the second point is going to be at five. I'm going to make this a sample of about 100 points just so we have a relatively coherent line. And you can see that line just existing there. Next thing to do is go to chart and select the data series as being from the line. In this case, the x axis is going to be our velocity in the x direction and the y-axis is going to be the vertical coordinate. So in this case it will be Z. So just clicking apply, what you see is that as you move above the ground, you get some increase in velocity with height. And that's according to the parallel profile. Obviously you had a more refined mesh close to the ground, you'd see a much smoother increase there. But that guys is how to do expressions in ANSYS CFX. That's a very simple example. I'll upload a new example with a bit more complexity later on. If this was beneficial, please subscribe all to the channel or like the video. And if you have any other questions, queries or comments, please leave that below and I'll address them as quickly as I can.